Now that my synthesizer is making some sounds, I want to build a sequencer. And since I'm planning to build a bunch of digital modules in the future, I want it to have a double purpose as kind of a development platform. Something with all the hardware I might want for digital modules that I can quickly upload code to test on. I'm going to try to explain how the sequencer works. In its simplest form, a sequencer is just a list of values, and it will send one of those values to its output. Every time it receives a clock signal, it'll change which value that is. A continuous clock signal like this will make it step through each number one by one. If you want to adjust how fast it changes these numbers, you just have to adjust the speed of the clock signal. A clock signal like this will make it go faster. I think that was a decent explanation. I've got a working version here based on a very popular design called the Baby 8 Sequencer, and it works pretty well. This kind of sequencer stores its values in potentiometers, which makes it a little bit difficult to scale up to higher step counts. Instead, I want to go the digital route and store my values on a microcontroller. But in order for the synth to actually use the digitally stored values, they need to be converted into analog voltages. For that, I'm using the MCP4922. It's a 12-bit DAC capable of making 4096 different voltages. In order to input values and stuff into the microcontroller, I'm using a combination of buttons and rotor encoders, and to see what it's doing, I'm using two OLED screens. I think the prototype is looking pretty good, so I finished designing the panel. I've got it loaded up on the computer here. I'm gonna cut it out, sand it, and drill all the holes. I've got the finished panel here and all of the other parts I need for the final assembly of the module. I didn't have any panel mount buttons, so I ended up designing some that I could 3D print. You just have this little holder here with all the switches in it, and then these little pieces fit into the panel. Then you can screw them together, and then you should be able to press them. The next thing I'm going to mount is the LEDs, and they just fit into these little holders that also screw in the same way as the buttons. Next is the shelf and the circuit board. I moved all of the chips and stuff from the prototype onto here. The microcontroller also mounts to the shelf, and I ended up going with a Mega Pro instead of the Arduino Nano, since the Nano didn't have enough RAM to run both screens. It's almost done, I've got the encoders installed, and the last thing is the jack sockets. The module is done. The wiring took about 8 hours, and I've written some code to run it as a sequencer. The software is definitely in its early stages, but it is functional. You can change the sequence values using the rotor encoders. Right now, it just shows the number it's actually sending to the digital to analog converter, but since the outputs are pretty accurate, you could have it show voltages or even notes if you wanted to. The great thing about a digital module like this, where everything's kind of software defined, is the stuff on here could be completely different just with a firmware change. Right now it's running a sequencer, change a few numbers, low resolution beans. This ability to change firmwares is why I put the USB port on the front. And the idea is to kind of have all the main functions I want in one firmware so you're not changing them constantly. But if I was, for example, developing a drum sequencer, I could write the firmware on here, and then once I have the hardware fully decided on, I can move the firmware from here to there. So it kind of helps with development. I think that's it for this module. Next one should be this multi-channel sample player. Bye. Mm -hmm.